So today I'm going to be showing you around my 1959 Hillman Minx. She's a Series 3 convertible in ocean blue and I have named her Martha. Um, so I'm very excited to show you around her today. So I've always loved Hillman Minxes and I've wanted one for some time ever since I used to visit the Stondon Transport Museum in Henlow um, before it unfortunately closed down a few years back in 2015. There was a rather tatty pale yellow convertible with a light blue interior but I absolutely loved it and I always made a beeline for this car when we'd visit the museum. It was a year newer than Martha so a Series 3A. Um, and when the museum closed down, the whole collection was auctioned off, but it wasn't the right time for us to get a Minx, plus it needed too much work, which wasn't within our capabilities at the time. A few years later, another Minx convertible came up for sale at the Bewley Auto Jumble, but again, timings weren't right, and it was up for a lot of money. Then, one day at the start of 2020, Tom and I were watching an old black and white film called Payroll, where the main character drove a 1958 Series 2 Minx convertible. So I put it to Tom, I said, how would you feel if I got a Minx? Well, it didn't take much convincing as he rather liked them, so it was decided that evening that my next classic would be a Hillman Minx. Easier said than done, as there were none for sale at the time though, or at least no convertibles, so I set about joining the Hillman Minx Owners Club on Facebook. I kept an eye out, and I think I was on the page for just under a month when someone shared a potential car for sale to the page. It was the perfect car. The right age, the right colour, it was a convertible and not too ridiculous a price. It also appeared to be in really good condition, which is what I was after. Um, this would be a car to replace my Triumph Spitfire, which had always bothered me as the paint and interior were a little bit tatty for my liking. And as much as I'd enjoyed restoring Maggie, my Wolseley 1100 with Tom, I knew that this time round I needed a car that was already sorted and would need little to no work, and I was happy to pay a bit extra for this. Now, it was a bit of a strange one, as it wasn't listed as a proper for sale advert, and it was only a post from a local buy and sell Facebook page that had been shared by someone else to the Owners Club page. So I made sure I was first in there and sent the seller a message straight away that evening and the following day there was a bit of back and forth as he shared a PDF information file with me about the car. I think he was also impressed at the thought of it coming to live with me in Coventry with it being the home of Roots cars and where Martha would have started out her life. I tried not to get my hopes up as I knew there were other people interested in the car. In fact, I ended up paying about a grand more than the car was originally advertised for as there was a bit of a bidding war, I suppose, with at least one other person. Anyway, I convinced the seller to let me come and view the car that afternoon, so I headed down to Bristol to have a look. And, as expected, she was just as perfect in person, and completely as described. So we agreed on the price, and I was super excited. I never expected to find one as quick as I did, so I'd now have to hurry up and sell the Spitfire to make space. I arranged for Martha to be collected and trailered back the following week and I sat by the window that afternoon waiting for her to arrive. Tom had a look around the car as he wasn't able to come with me originally when I went to view her and luckily he was very impressed. So we both took her on a little test drive around the block and she just wasn't running quite right so Tom had a little play and got her to run a bit better for the time being and he has actually since had another look so she now runs and drives very well. Now, I'm the fourth owner of Martha, with her first owner, Thomas Cyril Mills, owning her for 40 years before she moved to Southampton to be with her second owner, Reginald, who was a retired roots mechanic who kept her for a further 18 years. Then in 2017, she moved on to Steve in Bristol, and it was Steve who sold me the car in May 2020. Martha has actually been re-registered with an age-related number plate, with her original plate being RJN889. This was taken off by Reginald as the letters were close to his initials, but I believe he has since sold the plate on, unfortunately. She's quite low mileage, with only a little over 42,000 miles on the clock when I bought her, and a stack of MOT certificates to prove this is genuine. So I imagine she hadn't been used much in the past, with the exception of small local journeys. 
We also presume she might have been run on choke a fair amount too, as initially, when this was pushed all the way in, she just didn't run right. While in Steve's ownership, Martha was given a bare metal respray with cellulose colour match, and she had also previously had some welding done to her doors. Steve also sourced various bits for her, including some missing chrome trim. Unfortunately, because I bought her in May last year, I've been very limited to what we could do with her. However, we have managed a few local drives when restrictions were lifted last year, um, as well as some small local shows, which has been good. There are so many fancy and interesting features of the car, and they just seem way more advanced compared to other cars of a similar age, such as the Morris Minor. Just the whole layout of the dash is stunning, with all the dials and switches in one place all beautifully laid out. And then under the dash, there's an original five valve HMV radio, which unfortunately no longer works as it's positive earth. And at some point in the past, Reginald converted the car to negative earth. It still looks great, though, and adds to the prettiness of the car. So this doesn't bother me. Martha has beautiful leather seats, too, also finished in ocean blue. But what I love is the movement when you pull the front seat backs forward to climb into the back. Um, you can only do one at a time as they fold forward at an angle, which gives you better clearance to get in, which is a really nice touch. And obviously, because the front seat is a bench seat, the handbrake is positioned between the seat and the driver's door. The gear stick in Martha is floor mounted, but she actually left the factory with column shift change, but this was converted to floor change by her second owner, Reginald. Now, the roof is very clever in the way it works. Once it's unclipped, you fold the first section back as far as the B pillar. The car can be driven like this with only the front part of the roof open, which I think is a brilliant design feature, although I'm yet to drive her like this. You can then fold the roof all the way down and it sits flush with the car, which looks very smart due to the car being pillarless. The rear windows are also one of my favourite things, as rather than just rolling down, they rotate into the body of the car at 90 degrees. So there's a bit of history on Martha for you. So I'll now briefly tell you a little bit about Minxes in general. So the Hillman Company was founded in 1907. It was acquired by Humber in 1928, and then it came under the Roots Group from 1931. Roots Group was founded in 1913 by brothers William and Reginald Roots. And as well as owning Hillman, they also bought Humber, Singer, Sunbeam, Talbot, Comma and Carrier. The latter two were manufacturing um, commercial vehicles. The main Roots plant was based in Ryson on Dunsmore near Coventry. And if you look closely at the Hillman badge, you will notice the three pointy shapes. And these are to represent the spires of the three Coventry cathedrals, which is a nice little touch. Hillman had been producing the Minx since 1931 with their pre-war cars before moving on to the Mark 1 to 8s from 1945 to 1957. However, in 1956, they started to produce a new type of cars known as the Audax Design Minx. So for each year of production, the car was given various facelifts and each time it gained a new series number. So these started with the Series 1 in 1956, the Series 2 in 1957, and the Series 3s, like Martha, were in 1958 before they moved on to doing a Series 3A, 3B and 3C in the following years, before eventually jumping back and finishing with the Series 5 and Series 6. So over the years, the engines increased in size, with Martha's being fitted with it, with Martha being fitted with a uh, 14 94cc engine. Other cosmetic changes for the Series 3s were that the boot handle and the number plate light were lowered as they were given a rectangular rear number plate as opposed to the previous square type plates. They were also given a chrome grille and chrome headlight rings whereas later models had body coloured headlight rings. In 1961, the Super Minx was launched, but this was marketed as a completely separate model to the Series 6, which remained in production for a few years, while the Super Minx was also available. 
Now I should just mention as well, something different about Martha is that she does have the wrong grill. She is actually fitted with an aluminium grill with vertical slats, which is from a Hillman Husky. Personally, I prefer the style of grill though, and I think it really suits her. So I think that pretty much covers everything. I don't have many plans of things I want to do to her, as like I said, she's already basically there, but she will at some point need new tyres, so I've decided when the time comes she'll be getting white wall tyres, um, as these were an optional extra for the Minx at the time, and I think they would really suit her very well. Other than that though, I'm just looking forward to driving her and enjoying her and showing her off at car shows. So thank you so much for watching my video. I hope you've enjoyed learning a bit about how I came to own Martha and a bit about Hillman Minxes in general. Um, if you did enjoy my video, please make sure you like and subscribe to my channel.